You're watching Sunday edition here on KTN News. Thank you for staying with us. Now, let's uh, focus our attention on the war on graft, which we have been made to believe the government has been cranking up the pressure and uh, stepping up that fight. This past week, uh, there were several arrests for uh, buildings apparently allegedly built on riparian land. There have been a lot of de demolitions going across, especially uh, the city county of Nairobi. This past week, the wife of the Kiambu governor, Ferdinand Waititu, Susan Wangari, was arrested and, uh, and arraigned before an anti-corruption court here in Nairobi. There was a lot of drama afterwards as the Nairobi governor called his Kiambu counterpart and uh, leaking or having that, uh, recording that call and having it leaked. Uh, many people questioning what was the motive of that, even questioning uh, the manner in which the Nairobi governor was dropping names of the so-called Mkubwa. Let's listen in. At the Nairobi City Magistrates Court, Kiambu Governor Ferdinand Waititu's wife, Susan Wangari, and 13 others are charged with putting up a building without approved plans, moments after being arrested. They all deny the charges and are released on an 80,000 shilling cash bill. A release that was preceded by a somewhat dramatic phone conversation featuring Nairobi Governor Mike Sonko, Kiambu Governor Ferdinand Waititu, his wife Susan Wangari, and a police officer. One that suggests that the arrest and arraignment in court may perhaps have all been stage managed. In the conversation, Waititu urges Sonko to have all the 14 people arrested released. <laughs> Sonko tells Waititu he will have his wife released illegally. He indicates he is working on orders from above. Sonko Sonko goes ahead to call a police officer through whose phone he talks to Waititu's wife and again repeats the fact that he was going to break the law. Nasemaje, Your Excellency, hiyo yeah. order imetoka kule juu, yeah. but mimi navunja sheria na kuachilia wewe, yeah. au wengine ni mwambia mzee apigie, apigie uko juu. In the four minute, 54 seconds phone conversation, Sonko assures Susan Wangari that she will get the approval for construction. So what does it take to get an approval, a mere application, or do standards have to be met? Sonko was not done yet. He becomes the magistrate and even decides on the amount to be issued. Ochanda, muandikia cash bill. Ya kama, muandikia cash bill ya kama ngiri kumi. Kama hiyo watu wana support ya ubomuaji, mimi ya pana support. The arrest comes days after YT2 opposed the ongoing demolitions of buildings put up on riparian land, an exercise that has the backing of President Uhuru Kenyatta. Could YT2 be paying for going against the grain? Sonko insinuates as much. Yeah. Which boss is giving Sonko instructions? Maybe Sonko did not hear Uhuru's statement on Tuesday after a cabinet meeting. The time is gone where you say I did because somebody made a phone call to tell me to do something. The phone conversation raises more questions than answers. And for the Nairobi governor who acts on impunity in the release of the accused, why did he or his aides record the conversation? Rita Tinina, KTN News. All right, this was last week. Uh, Grafts, many people agree, comes in many shapes and forms. Uh, Dismas, from where you sit. Um, this, just coming days after the president says uh, he's ready to lose friends over this war on corruption. What is your take on, on the whole, uh, the arrest of the Kiambu governor's wife and, and release and the recorded phone call? Uh, several things come to play. Number one, the people who voted in uh, President Kenyatta to become President of the Republic of Kenya did not elect him to go to state house and make friends. They elected him to go and uh, deliver. So the, 
if by taking decisions on uh, delivery he loses the number of friends he has, then uh, so be it. Let him lose as many as possible. Because the kind of friends he's going to make when um, he's able to manage uh, corruption would be so many. Can you imagine a lady who goes to a national hospital, say Kenyatta National Hospital, and is unable to get services because folks appointed by the president have engaged in acts of corruption. Those are the people who do not care how many friends President Kenyatta has, but will be friends with President Kenyatta if they're able to go to a public facility and they get medication and they're treated, they go back happy. Number two, the behavior of um, Governor Sonko and Governor Waititu is a, a celebration of uh, impunity, mediocrity, and corruption. It just confirms to us that uh, the decisions we take during, uh, when, when we go to vote, are erroneous decisions. That when we are voting, we do not uh, vote with our selfish interest in mind. I mean, the, the, how, how would you have a government of, the, of Nairobi recording such kind of a conversation and uh, leaking it? That is uh, uncouth, it's uncultured, it's unacceptable. Number two, how do you have two governors in a conversation having a deal on how to break the law? I mean, these are two governors of probably the most two important counties in Kenya, Nairobi and Kiambu. And they're having a phone conversation and they're conspiring on how they're going to break the rule of law and order. One governor says, release all those guys who've been arrested, including my wife. And then the, the, another governor admits, yes, I'm going to release uh, your wife, but let the others be charged. But in the interim, a proper application and I'm going to pass it. Now, this application, is it not supposed to go through some uh, basic standards? Exactly. And in my view, there's a political party in Kenya called Jubilee, which I think is a major letdown because these are members of this political party, and one would have the expected president's party. And one would have expected the president should be furious, boiling over with fury that is two governors responsible for the two most important counties in Kenya, in open daylight, are conspiring or now to break the rule of law and order, and in the process, they even drop his name. And I think uh, Governor Waitit was uh, probably very measured and conservative because, you know, he was a few minutes from uh, saying the regulatory terms about uh, President Kenyatta. He would have easily said, wachana na mkubwa, wacha tudili kitu mimi na wewe, sisi wa wili. He was very measured. And if our Rafael Tuju, the Secretary General of uh, Jubilee, these are two members who are supposed to be summoned and uh, disciplined right. and expelled from the political party. Right. But now going to joining the dots. These are very strong statements that Jubilee has started eating itself. Now you have Jubilee A, you have Jubilee B, and you have Jubilee C. You have internal cut fights. And the glue that was putting Jubilee together, which is Raila Odinga, Raila Odinga is no longer on the scene, so you, you, have, you don't have Waititu or Sonko throwing bats at uh, Raila Odinga. Now it's an internal thing. Yes. And we should be very careful with the political parties so that we establish political parties which serve our interests. It's the same thing which happened at the National Assembly. The, the party vetting process during uh, nominations is as good as zero because a solid political party would have not allowed uh, some of the members we have in the National Assembly to run on their tickets. A solid political party right. would not have somebody like Sonko or okay. Tito running on their tickets. Okay. Mark, Jubilee Party is the president's party. Uh, the Jubilee administration is the uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta administration. He's trying to fight corruption. Then we have what we had the last week. Um, is it a PR gimmick gone wrong or is it just a true de a depiction of how things are? I mean, how people in the Jubilee administration are not on the same page? Well, it, it doesn't come as a surprise because what, would, what else would two monkeys in a forest do? Uh, to be honest with you, do you expect any better of, of Sonko? He, he leaked uh, pictures of himself with another lady who was not his wife, who was not mentioned on TV some time back. So this is classic Sonko. This is modus, his modus operandi. This is how he operates. If you do anything with Sonko, you remember the other time, he was not even ashamed um, to have a public conversation, uh, uh, make public a private conversation between him and the president. You remember the other time. So this is Sonko, classic Sonko uh, behavior. But what I find interesting is how usually how such stories breaks is there's a journalist who's done an investigative piece and found the recording and leaked it to the public this is someone who leaked it himself <laughs> you understand this is someone who's exposing himself Secondly, he put waititu's number 
uh, there for all to see, which is a crime, by the way. You cannot expose people like that. But that being said, the question must be asked. So the governor of Nairobi, seated in his office, knows every single building that is built illegally in this city. Meaning that it is quite easy for him to stop such constructions. Meaning that the deaths of people who die under the rubble of houses that, and buildings that have, been, that have been erected without permission can be stopped. So my question is, were it not for Waititu's desire to divert rivers, could this building have continued to exist simply because it was not politically expedient for Sonko to do anything? And the question also has to be asked that these buildings that are mushrooming all over Nairobi without permits, then does the governor's office know and is doing nothing about it? All right. The other thing that we must consider is for how long will clever people vote for stupid people and expect stupid people to do clever things. Question. When we voted in Sonko and Waititu, we knew very well that the bulk of us were cleverer than them. We knew very well that a class 8 pupil can probably reason better than them. Why is it that we as Kenyans keep voting for these people and expect different results? When we voted for Sonko, what did we expect? Did we expect that just because he put on a suit and could read a speech, he has changed his colors and his tone? The reality of the matter is this, that now Kenyans can see what the, the height of their foolishness has brought them. That guess what? You vote for a foolish person, expect foolish results. But, right. but, but Ben, you recall President Kenyatta and Deputy President William Samuel Ruto gave us guarantees on the Nairobi leadership. They said Sonko is a member of our political party, give him this uh, power and we guarantee you outcomes. That's the same thing they did for us in uh, Kiambu. They guaranteed the outcomes. So if there's any who is supposed to be answerable, is the Jubilee Party leadership. And this is not only limited. You know, we may just assume that it's only these uh, two governors. Majority of the governors are playing in the same league, probably. They don't have an application on their phone to leak this kind of leak, conversations. Uh, conversations. Yeah. Uh, Chumba, what do you think? First of all, Ben, <coughs> it is unfortunate that we, we as a country mm -hmm. celebrated as we saw the rule of law die, as we saw people who have been elected to office defile the rule of law, rape the rule of law. First of all, I think we need to tell these governors that leadership is not about the number of Facebook likes and retweets you will get. Mm -hmm. They need to get that. And I think going forward, we need to have a leadership curriculum in this country as part of our statutory laws. So that today when you are elected as a governor, you are taken to Kenya School of Government or Kenya School of Monetary Studies for a month. You are told, you are given a full briefing of how our constitution operates and what it means to be say we are a constitutional country. That is our starting point. If we can get that right, we will be in order. But to the main issue of Sonko. One, Sonko is a ripe and a mature candidate for impeachment in all standards. He is ripe and I, I, I wonder what Elachi and his team and the team under the county assembly are doing. This is a person who ought to have been impeached and we go for a fresh election. We get rid of the city of Nairobi from this kind of childish behaviors. We cannot run the epitome of Eastern Africa, the hub of business and technology in this side of the world, like we are running an high school, a high school canteen. It cannot be the business. <laughs> Look at it this way. Sonko ought to be invited to read Article 173 uh, under Chapter 11 of our Constitution. Mm -hmm. The article itself to how county governments and national government are supposed to relate. They are supposed to be interdependent. There is no mdosi. All of the governments in their own right. For Sonko to come and say in a phone call that there is a mdosi, we weep for the constitution. Right. Chapter 6, <clears throat> Article 73, Sabbatical 1A, it addresses itself that how a leader acts should bring honor to the office. Does what Sonko does he engages in a daily basis bring honor? No. Now let us go back to the, soft, to the software issues. Mm -hmm. I think when Uru, President Uru Kenyatta told us he, will, he has been losing friends, he needs to look as a matter of public practice. As a matter so of urgency. that the country can regain the confidence that he has injected in, in terms of the fight against corruption and impunity. We cannot have a person sitting somewhere 
and saying Mudosi amesema, which is the proscribed statutory law that gives Mudosi power to say go and do this. Another point is this, why, yes, we know that these municipal courts have a distinct administrative jurisdiction, but they are, they, they, they are stated out. Yes. They are not run like a Gestapo. Sonko cannot run Nairobi like he's running his home in the hill somewhere. This is a city, it has laws. All right, so and away from Sonko, from Sonko a bit, uh, and I start with you, Wakili. Is, pres is the President Kenyatta winning this? You know, you, sit? you know, I was, I was convinced that we were winning the war on corruption until this thing was dropped. Actually, what surprised me is that Sonko himself cannot write the simple name Waititu. It surprised me. But now, back to the president. The president has the, the country is behind him in this. But we cannot win this corruption if the closet friends are doing what Sonko is doing. If the closest people are saying Mdosia Mesema, we cannot fight to entrench rule of law by entrenching rule by law, right. where we are using law as a tool of subjugation. Mark, do you that think the is president is really ready to lose friends? And what does he need to do? <laughs> The, the president needs to do one thing. He needs to be consistent. Yeah. He's going to win this battle if he's consistent and repetitive with, with his... He needs to be consistent in making sure these people are arrested. He needs to be consistent in making sure that he's shaking up his government. He needs to be consistent in the lifestyle audit. He needs to be... Officers who are suspected of, of, of abating uh, corruption or home and uh, vetting them afresh, he needs to be consistent. That's the only thing the president needs to do. But the, the, his, his uh, people, both within Jubilee, in parliament and in Senate, need to understand the, the, the importance of uh, something called the presidency. The presidency is not a person called Uhuru Kenyatta. The presidency is a constitutional institution that holds the country together. We cannot to rope in and call in the presidency as though we are calling for people in, 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 in a toilet. We cannot say, like Murkomen said the other day, that the president's signature is signing deals with Wakora. That means that every deal that President Kenyatta has signed is potentially a Wakora signature. You cannot then say that the president has sat down and decided that he's going to frustrate a Kenyan simply because he can do so. That is gross disrespect to the office of the presidency and the whip needs to be uh, to, uh, the whip needs to be cracked on such people and the sooner it is done the better because a lot of these politicians are now beginning to think they do not need to cast their lot with Uhuru Kenyatta because to them he does not exist beyond 2022. But the foolishness and the hubris of that is that we forget that the institution of the presidency is an institution that represents every member of this republic called the Republic of Kenya. And disrespect to it is the grossest disrespect you can give to the people of Kenya by mentioning the presidency as though it is a prefect's name in some high school. And that needs to stop. And if Jubilee is not going to do that, forget about Jubilee A, B, C, and D. It is even better for Jubilee to split than for Jubilee to hold together and be the kind of institution that cannot respect itself. Dismas, the president says he will, or he is backing the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission to fight corruption. But do you think there is political will from the political class, especially the Jubilee Party, to do that? Or is it necessary to have political will? Or are the institutions enough to do that? Well, the, the institutions in uh, theory are independent and they can move on their own motion. But obviously they need uh, their political goodwill. And they need to see examples coming from the really president. really independent if we can hear things like uh, well, it, you well, well, that's why I'm very careful with my words. Yes. In theory, the independence. I mean, one would assume that uh, ESCC and uh, the bishop is independent, the DPP is independent, that they can move on their own motion. Right. But there's no public servant in Kenya who would receive a call from uh, President Kenyatta and ignore it in the name of uh, being independent. Maybe what they should be looking at is are the instructions they're getting from President Kenyatta consistent with our public good. And for the president to demonstrate goodwill, he must start by firing people who've been accused in all manner of mischief without waiting for them to be taken to court. I mean, there's a commission, the, these guys who are probing issues of sugar, they've said Rotish took a decision which does not serve our public interest. What else is the president waiting for? Adan Mohamed has done the same thing. What else is the president waiting for? 
Those are the signals that we are supposed to be seeing all over. You have two governors from your political party who are abusing and defiling the rule of law and order. I mean, those are the signals we are supposed to be seeing from the president. That's number one. Number two, the big four is going to be a white elephant. It's going to be a successful failure if the president does not kill this monster called corruption. Because right now resources are being set aside to finance the big four. But what stops the responsible public servants from stealing those resources? Because they know in Kenya you can steal, and right now the worst which can happen to you is to be arraigned before a chief magistrate's court, mm -hmm. and you'll be given a, a cash bill of a two million bob. I mean, if you steal, if you've stolen a billion bob, and you're being told to give a cash bill of a, a million bob, what is that? You're being told to give a cash bill of a two million bob. What is that? So. If the president is not consistent, as Mark Bichach has indicated, then people will just start uh, laughing at him. He gives the instructions, and uh, people roll their eye. Right. Roll their eyes. Saying, Talking about consistency, Mark, let me ask you this: There was a lot of lip service paid to the issue of uh, lifestyle audits. Mm. Um, that seems to have uh, died down. What happened to it? Was it a PR stunt? I, I, I don't think it has died down because there were a raft of new measures that, that w were announced. Mm -hmm. However, the lifestyle audit is, is quite an interesting, it, an interesting thing because, number one, we do have lifestyle audits. The only difference is, is that you write them in the dark and throw them into the void that is your, your HR manager's file. And, and that's been the issue. But for me, what is encouraging is the stories that are coming out out of the vetting of procurement managers, uh, where they, they have been subjected to lie detector tests, where they've been asked and, and uh, good reports have been given to them that, for example, we know you own this building and you earn 20,000 shillings a month. How is it that you are able to own this building? So those stories are quite encouraging. But what is critical for the, for the president to do is he needs to continue tightening the rules. <clears throat> Yesterday he came out and he said that Kenyans should arrest the next policeman they meet uh, uh, trying to ask for a bribe. I hope that when that policeman is arrested, that the president and his team will swing into full action. The only thing that the president can do is to keep hacking at this. Corruption in this country can only die by a thousand cuts. He's going to cut at it from every side. The lifestyle audit needs to be implemented. And like he promised, it needs to start with himself, go to his deputy, go to Raila Odinga, so that we can have a country that for once Kenyans can justify. Right. You know how Kenyans talk about their wealth? It is always God. It is always God. You know, God has brought me this far. No Kenyan has a story of saying I had a hundred shillings, I invested it and I made a thousand shillings. We need to tell that story because if we do not tell that story better, right. our young people will have no role models. All right. Because the only people they can look forward to are people who are poor today and tomorrow they got a job and the next day they were driving a Mercedes S class. All right, let's take a quick commercial break here on, K on Sunday edition on KTN News. Our focus, special focus, we will continue to turn our cameras on this, this issue of the fight against corruption. We, we are covering that for you here on KTN News in the way only we can. Let's take a quick commercial break here on the show. When we come back, we'll uh, get into some politics. Real politics takes us to Western Kenya. Don't go too far. Without your...